Hello, welcome to Things from the Flood. This is the first of four sessions of this game from Free League Publishing. Uh, this is on the Gauntlet Hangouts. You can find out more about the Gauntlet Hangouts and the blog and podcasts and zines and forums that we have at gauntlet-rpg.com. Uh, I'm Lowell. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the setup for the game, uh, going through our cats, uh, concept, aim, tone, and subject matter to describe what the game is about, uh, talk about safety tools, and a little bit about mechanics before we get the players to uh, the actual sort of character creation stage that we're going to have. So if you're one of those people who doesn't like character creation, uh, when you're watching an AP video, please jump to the midpoint of this thing rather than leaving me a nasty comment, um, uh, which is what we'll do. So there we are. Uh, different tastes. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a game that is a sequel to Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop is set in the 80s with kids. It's a kind of kids on bikes game. Uh, in a uh, town with this particle accelerator called the loop that creates strangeness. And this is based on a, a set of, of uh, art pieces uh, by a Swedish artists. And then this one is a sequel. We're taking place in the early 90s, based on another set of art books. But this is the same place, but things have gone wrong. Things have gone very, very badly. Uh, uh, the, the, the loop has crashed and weird things have begun to bleed into our reality. Um, and in reflection to that sort of darker uh, subject matter, darker tone, move from PG to PG-13, um, we're running teens. Uh, our characters are older and they're dealing with the issues of being a teenager. Um, so the, the concept is that we're playing teens in this alternate 90, 1990s. Um, and in particular, this is very much like the 1990s of our world, there are a few changes. Uh, they used to have a lot of robotics, but this machine cancer that has broken out has rendered a lot of the robots unusable. A lot of people are worried about the AI they used to have. They used to have these anti-grav, they still have them, uh, magnetrine vessels, but they're much more cautious about that after some technological collapses. Um, and those are all like advanced things, but at the same time, it's a world where People are just starting to get cell phones and they're huge. Um, and uh, people are just starting to use the internet uh, uh, at home, uh, 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 you know, through through pricey services and things like that. People are still doing dial up um, uh, uh, using Juno and AOL and all of those kinds of things. Um, so our teens are. Uh, caught up in their own issues and also dealing with the the strangeness of the world around them. And so we've we've got this mixture of of uh, ordinary daily life, alienation, and sort of the discovery. There are weird things going on. Their mysteries are going to figure them out. And our aim then is going to be to explore those lives. Uh, and uh, we, as our default assumption, all of our characters, all of our teens, are friends. Um, now, there are some tensions within that friendship, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the default assumption is you're, you're friends, you know each other, um, and we're going to be looking at how that friendship gets tested and how it survives these challenges um, uh, in the course of you, you know, living your life and, and trying to solve these mysteries. Uh, our tone is PG-13 uh, because it includes a lot of teen issues. Uh, uh, and it also uh, essentially is a little bit darker, a little more scary. Tales from the Loop, death is not on the table for the characters. Things from the Flood, death is on the table for the characters. It's, it's a long journey down for a character to get taken out, but it is on the table, and characters can get, get more seriously injured in this game. This is a game that is much closer to Stranger Things in terms of visualization and tone and and the kind of darkness that we're seeing uh, in the, the world. And our subject matter is our, our daily lives, uh, weird phenomena, uh, the interactions between our characters and the investigations. Um, I wanna talk just briefly uh, about uh, some of the assumptions that the, the game makes. I, I sent out a discussion of this, um, but one of the things to keep in mind is that in this world, again, besides being friends, 
things are kind of ragged at the margins. Nobody wants to talk about that. Um, whereas the 1990s, the early 90s were not a time in the US of, of economic nasties or hysteria. Things were bad, but not terrible. Um, here in this world, there's been some serious technological crashes. So we're much closer to the tone and feeling of what was going on in Europe at the same time. Related to that, uh, I, I grew up in the 90s, uh, in the 80s, and then, then into the 90s. So uh, uh, I, this is a little bit on my touchstone. Uh, but I was also uh, a Midwesterner. So our setting is Wayward, Ohio, a Midwestern city. The book originally contains a Swedish setting and a setting in Boulder, Colorado. But I went with Ohio um, because I know the Midwest. Um, and uh, uh, whether that's for good or ill, who knows? Um, one of the things is that as teens, you're caught between being kids and adults. Kids are kind of like look up to you or, or scared of you at times and adults don't know what to make of you. And sometimes you don't know what to make of yourself. You have lots of demands on your time. You have lots of expectations, both from your peers and your family. Uh, and those are things that you're going to be wrestling with. We will, because of course we're dealing with teens, dealing with kids' issues, and dealing with a, a game that borders on being a little bit of a horror mystery game, we are going to be using safety tools. Uh, my default safety tool is the X card. Um, I, I suspect everybody's familiar with that here. Okay. Um, and that can be done marking that X card via chat uh, or visible signal. Uh, the X card can be used to deal with material you find problematic things you find objectionable, things that trip on phobias. Uh, uh, it can also be if something feels way off tone. Uh, those are all, all reasonable uses for the X card if we're going uh, off that. And at that point, I may get a frame from you exactly where we're editing, but we'll edit past it and and there'll be no, no judgment on that. Um, something that Rich Rogers taught me is uh, to mention that if if something happens a couple times, and the first few times you're like, I'm okay with that. Um, but later on you're like, no, now I'm not. It is legit to pull the X card later. Don't feel bad about that. Um, if, if, if you were okay with me putting the, the spiders on the table the first few times, and then suddenly you're like, okay, no, I've, I've had enough spiders. Um, that is a legit reaction. And one I've seen at the table. Um, so just to, to get you uh, into that. Um, with that in mind, Having a sense of that PG-13, having these teen issues and things like that, kind of knowing what the range is, I do want to stop and see if there are any hard lines or veils that people want to have, things that they definitely want to have off the, the table. Um, uh, I think that uh, sexual abuse and sexual assault is, is something I, I'd like to keep off the table if that's okay with people for this. Um, just something I'd like to, to draw a line on um, uh, uh, and, and put off the table. Um, uh, I want to see if anybody else has anything that you want to mention, particularly as something you definitely don't, don't want to be seeing in the, the course of this game. Pocket, anything? Um, you hit the one that I was going to say already. Um, I do have a question, considering we're now sure. talking about older kids, and it's pretty much the same question I asked last night sure. about where drugs and alcohol come into play. Is that something that should have a line on it or is, should that be a veil or is that out of scope? Uh, I, I'm, I'm open on that. I want to see what the other, other players think. Uh, does anybody have an objection to that being featured or do you want to have a particular line on that or, or not have it on the table? Any, any strong feelings about that? Okay. Well, then, then I think that's that's a fair game. And if we hit something that people do get uncomfortable with, we can we can draw a line there. Does that seem cool? Fine by me. Okay, Stephen. Anything you want to to point to? Um, I think violence towards um, kids younger than teenagers might be something I'd like to keep off the table. Okay. Um, uh, you know, them being scared is fine, but them being you know kidnapped and taken away or bad stuff happening, I'd like to stay. Yeah, I'd like to stay away from that. Okay, I'm I'm fine with that. Um, we can put more more teens in peril. Then that's always good. Um, uh, uh, Tom, anything from you? Um, um, I was just thinking, perhaps um, 
I'd probably like to keep like uh, suicide out of this if we can. Okay. Yeah. Not sure if that really would come up too much, but it's not something that, um, in this context with with teenagers, it's not something I'd be like super keen to explore at all. So, okay. No, and yeah. I think that's actually a, a really good one to draw a line on because that that can be a significant issue, especially in this era. So yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, it's on the character sheet for the lone wolf. So yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a, it's on one of the the options there. So it it is a thing. The game has a thing, and I think it's 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 uh, legit to to kind of cross that out as something we don't want to necessarily lean into or explore. Um, Wade, do you have anything you want to draw attention to? Um, no, I think everything I would have has already been brought up. Okay. Uh, I want to talk, and I'm going to talk very briefly about the mechanics of this game. They're pretty simple, um, and uh, uh, if, if you take a look at the, the character keeper, uh, you'll see you have four stats, body, tech, heart, and mind. Those go from one to five. And then you'll see you have 12 skills. Each of those skills is associated with one of the stats, so you always roll a particular stat with a particular skill. And basically you look at the total of, let's say you have a, a force of two and a body of three, that's five. That means you're rolling five D six. So it's, you roll as many dice as you have stat plus skill. You can always roll, even if you don't have any skill, you can always just roll with a stat. What you are looking for is at least one six. At least one of the dice needs to come up a six. If it does, that's success. And nearly all of the time, that is all you need. Uh, extra successes, you can spend to do more stuff. It's it's good to get those, those extra sixes. Um, uh, but all you need is one six. And as Steven can attest, that die roller will betray you. You will, you will go, I've certainly got enough dice that I will get at least one success, and that will not happen. Um, so uh, with that in mind, there are a couple of things that you have as options. You're going to pick for your character during the character creation process an iconic item, uh, something that means something to you. If you can bring that to bear when you're describing your action, you can get two extra dice. It's a, just two extra piece of equipment dice. Now, that's beforehand. Now, what can you do after? You have two choices for after a roll about what you would like to do to try and do better. And you can do this even if you've got a success, if you want more successes. One option is to push. When you push, you are going to reroll any dice that didn't show sixes. And you'll mark one of those four conditions that are listed under stuff. That's sleepless, thirsty, hungry, and cold. Uh, each one of those conditions is going to give you a cumulative minus one to future rolls. Um, so you push yourself. You get a chance to, to get more successes, but you do strain yourself. Um, and eventually, once you've hit all four of those, then you're... You're vulnerable to being broken, which can, can take you out. Um, the other option that you have is if something relates to your shame, as is, is, you know, the what you're doing plays into it that you want to overcome that or it leans into that, which is going to be a, a shame is something you're going to pick during your character creation process, then once per session you can Describe how that's impacting your attitude, impacting your approach, and you get one automatic success. Um, and that's in addition to whatever you roll. And you can choose to do that after a roll. And you do that once per session. Um, so those are your two tools for, for getting uh, past things. Um, that is just about all the rules right there um, that, that you need to know. Um, most of the things that you're going to be considering. Um, let me give you just a little more granularity on a couple of things. We've got 12 skills, and some of them are not quite as clear as others. Um, so I just want to briefly walk through those. The body skills are pretty obvious. We've got force, which is physicality, strength, uh, that kind of thing. 
Uh, we've got move, which is your dexterity, uh, and then uh, uh, and agility and all of that. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, the sneak, which is, of course, your, your stealth skill. Um, under tech, we have calculate, program, and tinker. Calculate is the ability to understand machines and technical systems. It's the information gathering skill. If we want to look and examine and figure something out, that's the skill for that. Uh, program is the ability to change and manipulate electronic things like computers, um, anything that has to be programmed, anything with a little more sophisticated set of operations. That's the ability to, to jury rig something, break something, fix something uh, that is uh, electronic in that way. And then finally, tinker is that same thing, but for uh, mechanical objects like, like robots, like cars, and so on. Tinker is also what you roll for driving. It's the driving skill, so just keep that in mind. Contact uh, is, if we go over to skills, I'm sorry, charm is, of course, uh, uh, charm, lying, all of that kind of thing, manipulating people. Contact is knowing the right person, being able to find someone who can do something, be able to find someone who can get you something, be able to get a hold of an adult, being able to call the police in without having problems, that kind of thing. And then lead is the ability to help people work together. You can, one person can make a leadership role to generate some extra dice for a scene. Uh, a leader can also spend time with another teen um, using their leadership to help them uh, clear one of their conditions. Um, so that's one of the tools that is that. Um, and then mind is, sorry, uh, comprehend is our general research skill. General, you know, hit the books, all of that kind of thing. Uh, study, uh, look at the library. Uh, empathize is reading other people. And then investigate is our general catch-all. Let's look around and see what kind of clues we can find here. Um, not, not a perception check, because perception is just kind of automatic. Um, but more for digging down and so on. The game has some specific questions for that. I use those as benchmarks, but I'm pretty flexible about questions in those contexts. All right. Um, so I have talked quite a bit here. What I'd like to do um, is mention one, one or two more things that are sort of tertiary, and then I want to walk through and have everybody talk about what of these archetypes slash playbooks you're considering of the 10 that we have on the table. Um, your drive is what pushes you to solve mysteries. Just, just know that that's sort of uh, your, uh, um, your motivation. And then your anchor is a particular person. And if you want to recover from a condition um, outside of leadership, that's the way that you do this. You go and you spend time with that person. If it's, a friend, if it's an adult, if it's a relative, um, that's the person that you go to for uh, uh, emotional support and assistance. All right. So let me uh, come and see, and I'm going to go in a particular order here and see if people have thoughts about what they would like. If you have a couple of choices, one, two, or three, we'll go around and let's, we'll do sort of the, the first pass on that um, pocket. Do you have uh, any of those playbooks that you are leaning towards right now? I kind of like the raver if nobody else does. Okay. I'm going to make, make a note of that. Um, and I'm going to write these down, and then we'll come back and see. Uh, Stephen, do you have any that you're interested in? Um, I looked through the playbooks, and I was interested in a number of them. Um, I filtered through them, maybe the lone wolf, if no one else is interested, but I could go with a number of other choices. Okay. Like, like, g g give me another one, then. Let's put, oh, let's put another one there. would be the street kid. Street kid, okay. And then, Tom, any thoughts? I was actually interested in the lone wolf above any of the others. So you were thinking lone wolf, possibly? Sure. Okay. Uh, and Wade, what were you thinking? Uh, my initial thoughts were either uh, the uh, Seeker or the Lone Wolf. 
Okay. Uh, so. Are you okay with the seeker? If, if okay. I definitely am. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of people I'd up that level. I'm definitely fine with the seeker. Okay, so let's let's have you seeker, pocket, uh, raver. Um, uh, are you okay with the street kids, Stephen? If we do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Tom, why don't you do the the lone wolf then? Cool. Um, and uh, taking a look at the playbooks, uh, you can go ahead and and work through all of the steps. Uh, the skip over the relationship to other teens. We'll come back and do that after people have gotten some things and gotten some introductions. If on like the questions, like the shames, the drives, the relationships to NPCs, none of those speak to you, uh, feel free to hold off and you can look at the playbooks that haven't been chosen afterwards and, and maybe find something that you want for that. Um, so uh, you'll choose your age, you'll distribute your attribute points and distribute your skills. Um, and I'm going to let you get rolling on that. And if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and hit me up while I sit here awkwardly. What rough month are we playing in, in 1982? Um, I was thinking April, just because it is April. So, Lowell, I noticed one of the shames on one of the other characters really spoke to me. And I th do you mind if I take the rocker shame? Muted. Uh, sure. Tell me what that what that one is. Um, I can't control my nightmares. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 fine with that. Oh, uh, for your uh, in that box next to appearance, you'll see that's empty. That has the the image pull down at the very bottom of the sheet where it says image link. You can drop uh, a, uh, the link that just overwrite that, and it should re pull up to the the box up top. With the iconic items, can we choose something that is not on that list but is appropriate for the character? Yes. Okay. All right, I want to double check on this. Uh, it didn't come up when we were talking lines of veils, but uh, one of the shames for the seeker uh, is I hurt myself. Is uh, self-harm going to be a problem for anyone? Doesn't sound like it, but and but we'll we'll since that is a a, a touchy issue, we'll definitely keep it keep it in mind. Um, but yeah, I think we can can work with that and. Uh, X card is necessary. Along the same lines, I'm looking at the shames for the raver, and I'm wondering if anyone has concerns or triggers around an eating disorder, or if that's something that we should just put behind a veil or a line. I don't hear objections, so so let's let's play with it, and if, if we need to modify it, we can.
And whenever it says you have 14 points for the four attributes, um, is that for the skills? That's for the stats. So body, tech, hard, mind, you're going to get uh, 14 points for those. So we start with 12? Oh, I just, put, I, just, I just put those numbers in there. Okay. Uh, uh, I should probably put them all at one. But yeah, uh, 14 points distribute however you want. Minimum of one, max of five. Um, and then skills, you have 10 points. Um, and the max is, you can have threes in your key, key area skills, but ones in anything else. And then for uh, the other thing I should, one last thing, uh, it, uh, uh, at the very, very end of you, the sheet, it says hook, hold off on looking at those. I'm going to talk about those when all are said and done. We're going to do a little bit, something with that. So for core stats, um, for example, a spread of three, three, and three and five would give you a total of fourteen points. That's accurate. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right, we give you about five more minutes, and then we'll we'll move to introductions.
Sorry, what uh, month did we say we we're in for figuring out birthday? April. Uh, April. Wade, you're going to make me pull out Floodland later tonight and listen to it. <laughs> Good. Well, I think I always like Lucretia in my reflection better. <laughs> that is my personal favorite from there, but uh, I think uh, uh, this character is different. Uh, it has a slightly different preference than me. Yeah. I actually saw them play with Daniel Dax back in 91 on, I think it was on the Vision Thing tour. I don't think I've ever seen so much dry ice in one place. <laughs> that would have been amazing. I think they played with the Mission UK or something like that, too. I was just like, wow. It was a very black night. <laughs> All right, I am going to get started. And uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna work across the character sheet, uh, across the columns. Uh, so Tom, uh, we're gonna start with your character, uh, the Lone Wolf. Um, why don't you tell us uh, about about them? Uh, okay, so, so Lawrence. Uh, just generally about Lawrence? Yeah, give, give us a sense of, of uh, I mean, we can walk through the drive, the anchors, those kinds of things, so, and sure. and talk to us about that. All right. So, uh, so Lawrence is fifteen. Um, his drive is he wants to feel something real. His anchor is his parents. Uh, his problem is several people love me, but I don't feel a thing. Uh, his shame is I hide my body under these clothes. His iconic item is a 
big Wu Tang hoodie. Um, yeah, so Lawrence is um, uh, pretty pretty big. Like he's he's very overweight for his age. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and I think that sort of defines a lot of how he he sees he thinks about himself. And uh, uh, in terms of Lone Wolf, uh, mm -hmm. are you picturing someone who kind of deliberately pushes everyone except their close friends away or someone who is by social nature pushed out? How do you imagine that? Um, probably the latter, more so than the former. Um, like it, it outcast rather than um, I hate everyone. So like excluded rather than exclusionary. And when, when you say under your problem, uh, uh, so people love me, but I don't feel a thing, is that, that parental love, sibling love? Is it is it other people attracted to you, a mix of those things? I think it's, um, yeah, a combination of all that sort of stuff. I think I think it would be fair to say he, like, has uh, a depression of some sort, mm -hmm. uh, like, to some degree, whether or not he's really aware of it or not. I'm not really super sure. Um but he feels sort of detached a bit from like the emotional space that isn't like the, the security of like the home and stuff. So, uh, and so, so he knows that, that, that he ought to be feeling these ways, but yeah. doesn't. And tell me about, uh, uh, your, your family, you say your mom and dad as your anchor, what, what's your relationship like to them? Um, so I think Lawrence's parents can sort of tell, well, so I guess I can sort of tell that, like, they're, um, uh, that there's that there's something up with with Lawrence on an emotional level. I think, um, I think that they probably don't really. Uh, I think that they might be physically a bit different to, to Lawrence. I think that like, they might not be like. Uh, they might not have the same uh, body type as, as Lawrence. And so Lawrence might be a bit of um, an odd one out in the family as well. So I think. Uh, well, and, and so what, what do your mom and dad do? So I think um, they run, they run a shop. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's like um, uh, it's it's like a, a music shop essentially. Like they would run a record store or or. Uh, a, a, okay. Are we are we into CDs yet or? Um, CDs are uh, there and coming around, uh, but they're still pretty pricey. Yeah. Uh, but but we definitely right. moved to the CD era by '92. Yeah. Right, sure. Yeah, so they'd run, they would run a shop like that. It would be like, it wouldn't be what their own. It would be a, a franchise. So it would be like just some sort of. So they manage like a, a record store at, at like the mall, one of the malls maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sam Goody is the name of the classic chain that sells that stuff uh, no during worries. this era. Um, and uh, it's 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 one of those stores that's that's desperately trying to find other pop culture things to sell, um, and and so on. So they probably got anime VHS tapes and that kind of yeah. thing in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, uh, siblings? Um, no, I don't no. think so. Nope. O only child. Mm -hmm. And academically, do you stand out? Uh, Not. Uh, pretty good. So full, okay. uh, five in mind. So um, it would be pretty reasonable. Um, and what is what's your house like? Is it a, a single story sort of ranch style? Is it two stories? Is it older, newer? So um, we're we're in the Midwest. Um, yeah. So um, it probably wouldn't be. It would probably be like probably single story. I mean, okay. for reference here in, in my city in, in Australia, um, it's very rare to find the two story houses except for super affluent suburbs. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely single story. Um, it would be on a reasonably big sort of layout though. So it wouldn't be like a small house. It would still mm -hmm. be fairly large. Yeah, it just wouldn't be 
uh, the big tall stuff. Yeah, I've been in some some ranch houses here in the Midwest where people have built on, and it's like a maze to get from one end to the other. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. All right, that gives me a, a good to picture. Um, which of those relationships, the NPCs, do you want to pick? Uh, so I've picked uh, my teacher, Mr. Gosterman, reads my short stories and likes them. So I think um, uh, Lawrence, like, lives, like, he, he reads a lot. He wouldn't, I don't think he really uh, has a lot of time for uh, for movies, but he would uh, both read and simultaneously be listening to music at the same time whenever he can. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to come back to you uh, after everybody's done, and we'll talk about the relationships to the other teens. Uh, so let's uh, move over to Sandra Phelps, our street kid. Um, so, Stephen, why don't you tell us about uh, Sandra? Sure. Sandra um, is 15. She's looking forward to getting her license as quickly as possible. Her 16th birthday is tomorrow. So... She's right there. She's probably going to go down tomorrow and try and get in line at the DMV just to get her, you know, license. Get her learner's permit, right? Um, so where I'm from, you get your learner's permit at 14. You get your license at 16. Oh, welcome to the Midwest where you get your learner's permit at 16. Ah, and then when do you get your license? Uh, I think you. it depends on the state, but you can you can get it after like a six-month period with your, your learner's permit. Ah. It, um, it varies from county to county, but but if we want to make it earlier, I'm fine with that too. Okay. If if she's gone through that process, maybe done driver's ed, and uh, uh, is is going to get her her early driver's license, I'm fine yeah, with that. I think okay. so. Um, she's the only one tough enough to stop what's coming. Um, there's been people who have been disappearing and weird stuff going on. She's had some, you know, strange things with a little gang of kids whenever she was younger, and that could have gotten really messed up and it didn't at the time, but we were kids. Um, my problem is that we're about to get evicted. Ooh. Um, my anchor is my older sister, Ruth. Um, I think she's a couple of years older, but still living at home. Um, my shame is I can't control my nightmares. What kind of nightmares? Um, usually it's about, uh, tentacled things coming out of the walls. Um, the machine cancer really freaks me out because it reminds me of my nightmares. Mm -hmm. So now is this just like, like, uh, a strong nightmares that hit or do you, is it literal night terrors? Um, it's strong nightmares okay. that I'm constantly reminded of, reminded of. It's not night terrors, as I understand it. You can't remember a lot about what terrifies you, and you wake up screaming and disturb the people around you. Okay. So it's it's more like this disturbs me, and I hold it all inside. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, go, go on through your drive and shame and so on. Let me – I interrupted you there. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I think I – Let's see. The only thing I think I had left was my favorite song and then my relationship with an NPC. Okay. Uh, let's, let's hear that. Uh, my favorite song is Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> this, this is the year that Sinead pops up on Saturday Night Live and gets in so much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember that fondly, of course. <laughs> and uh, one of the hottest kids in my class wants me to deal drugs for them. Ooh. Uh, this, uh, hottest kid, um, uh, male or female? I think it has to be a male. His name is Aaron. Okay. Yeah. And are they, are they in the same social economic status as you? Or are they higher social economic status? I think that they're higher economic sta status. So they know that. You know, I'm desperate for money. My family's desperate for money, which is why they're leaning on me. Uh, and uh, both parents at home. You've got your sister, Ruth, yourself. Uh, who else is, is there? Um, so it's both parents and sister, but they're all they're not at home too often. They're all looking for work. OK, so everybody's unemployed. I think dad used to be employed with the uh, 
who who are the people who run the the loop the the uh, crown crown yeah the crown he used to work for them but everything's just gone all to shit and nobody can find anything yeah massive massive unemployment losing all of those those jobs here in this this area okay um and has your sister quit school or is she looking for is she doing work after school so she's actually graduated from school okay and she is trying to find a job to help out the parents and what kind of place are you getting evicted from is it a house is it an apartment is it's it an apartment okay as soon as as soon as you know dad got fired we sold the house and moved into a small apartment but now the money's running out and so street kid implies kind of like there there's this that that you don't spend a lot of time on that you like spend your a lot of time elsewhere is that is that what's what's going on do you have a particular it, kind of hangout um literally i think i hang out on the street it's like you know in the neighborhood there's a lot of us kids who hang out we're all kind of in the same situation okay and we hang out like in the back alleys and stuff like that and it's where i picked up some of the uh less desirable habits what's the what's the congregation spot is it is it a uh, uh like a band shell down by the river uh is it a, a park um uh is it a skate uh park what, what do you imagine that that is um i like the idea that it's uh actually next to the uh liquor store that's in town Okay. I think there's like a bad area of town, which of course is where the cheap apartments are located, and this is where the you know there's going to be liquor stores and uh, laundromats and head shops and that kind of stuff. Okay. So we hang out in the liquor store parking lot, hoping to find somebody to buy us something. Buy buy the buy beers. Um, what do you look like? Oh, um, so I was looking around for a picture. I'll see if I can't find that and drop it in. Okay. Um, the picture I think I've settled on is blonde, kind of squirrely hair. Tall, short, medium? Um, I would say medium for girl. Short okay. for, you know, short in general, but medium for a girl. Okay. How did you get lock picks? Oh. What, what, how did those fall into your hands? Yeah, so basically I was hanging out in front of the uh, liquor store whenever biker bob came through and i bribed him for some beer and then i traded the beer for the lock picks okay nice all right uh that gives me a uh, a good sense of your character i'm going to uh roll forward and i'll come back to you um all right so uh let's hear about uh kara huntley our seeker all right, so uh, Kara, uh, she's a seeker. Um, she's 16. Uh, her drive is, uh, I'm a truth seeker. Uh, so I think a lot of her deal is like, um, you know, reality is kind of like drab and stressful and boring and all those things we were kind of talking about in the introduction. And she kind of like, you know, thinks, you know, there has to be something uh, more interesting or sort of more magical about the world uh, than uh, we see. Um, uh, so her anchor uh, is her weed dealer. Okay. Um, so let's just pause. Let's, let's pause that. What, what's your weed dealer like? Is it is it someone your age? Is it someone older? What or is it? Pineapple Express level kind of friendship or or something else? Um, I think it's maybe like. Um, like a college aged kid uh, who she probably looks up to as like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, sort of like just on that border of adult, like he doesn't really count as an adult yet type of a thing. So she can relate to him, but like, he's obviously like knows how things are and sort of like looks to him to sort of like sort out the world type of a thing. And I think, think he's probably free and dispensing his wisdom like we as like the audience can see that like he's full of shit he's just some stoner right. kid who's selling drugs to high school students but he's like oh like you know that sounds true right you know and, and as your anchor definitely you've, you did not not creepy just just kind of goofy just kind of kind of yeah way. okay yeah, I don't think it was like creepy i don't think he's like trying to hit on high school girls or something like that i think he just like you know 
like seeing himself as like kind of a mentor figure almost, you know, and like, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's uh, uh, tell us about the other stuff then. Sorry. Okay. So uh, her uh, problem is dad puts on everything, everything on the credit card, uh, but we're out of money. Um, I think, uh, you know, his, her parents just uh, aren't good with money. Life sort of, you know, uh, catches up with them. Uh, I kind of imagine her daughter or her dad having like maybe uh, an outdoorsy job. Like I saw one of the key locations or whatever was like a wildlife management area. So maybe he's like, you know, a parks person or something like that. Uh, her mom maybe works like part time in a grocery store or something like that. And, you know, it's not that, you know, they've got the mob knocking down their door for money. They're, her parents just aren't really great at being adults. Do you have siblings? Uh, no, I think she's a lonely child. Uh, okay. so. And what kind of place do you live in sort of on the sort of uh, uh, riding the cusp on the margin? Uh, I think it's just like, you know, a like uh, sort of a crummy sort of overcrowded apartment that she probably gets out of as much as she can. Um, and what is her, her iconic item? Uh, her iconic item is uh, books on mystery and the supernatural. So she's uh, sort of like uh, sort of uh, managed to get a little small con collection and that's kind of like her inspiration. Um, how long has she been hurting herself? Um, I think that's something that kind of like had been like, low-key happening probably for a couple years now but it's kind of like um accelerate over time kind of that thing where like when she's younger she maybe like when she's like 13 and maybe start she maybe didn't like do it very heavily or think about it very much but it's like now a real part of what she does and thus it's like her shame right do do you are your parents aware that you do this or have you, or have you managed to hide it? Or is there anyone that is aware? Um, I think uh, she has managed to hide it. Um, I don't think there are any adults who are aware, like maybe when we get to the interactions between the teenagers, maybe one of the other teens is, but okay. I don't think there's like any adults or like, cause she, yeah, she's pretty good at hiding. I see her parents as like being well mean, but not especially attentive. Do you think she'd be more angry or scared if if an adult confronted her about that? Probably more angry, I think. Okay. Um, and uh, tell me about this uh, relationship with uh, uh, NPC, the, the Victoria. Okay, so um, I think um, she's got a friend, Victoria, who is maybe uh, a little bit more straight-laced, but has like... Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, popular than her type of thing. And is sort of like um, confiding in her about her dad, uh, sort of, you know, developing like the loop disorder thing. Um, and I feel there's kind of a little bit of a thing of like Victoria maybe taking Kara a little bit for granted because, you know, um, you know, Kara's a little bit weird and stuff like that. And uh, so just kind of like, you know, it's a kind of maybe a little bit of a one way uh, emotional sort of labor thing. Kara can tell you about her problems, but it's not like you can, can reciprocate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, and I see we got a nice picture there for you. Um, all right. Uh, I think we'll come back to you on those relationship questions. Sounds good. All right. Uh, which brings us to Christine, tiny Tina Simmons pocket. Please tell us about her. Well, Tina is, small. She's maybe 5'1", five, 5'2", five, probably weighs a whopping 9,500 pounds, somewhere in that range. She's, she's small and she's little. And as she grew up, she just saw things going wrong around her and her family and her social circles <clears throat> in the town and technology and politics. And she resolved that life is a drag we might as well have fun while we can because things are going to hell in a handbasket so let's dance all night and throw our glow sticks around you know whistle dance with pacifiers in our mouths and just try to avoid it 
Now, her anchor, the person that she turns to when things go south, is Raven, the clerk at the head shop. And as appears to be a theme with the anchors that we have, it's not that Raven knows what she's talking about. It's just that she's a little bit older and seems to speak with the voice of wisdom. It's funny how we conflate age and wisdom. <laughs> so this is also complicated because Tina thinks she might be in love with Raven and she thinks she might be gay, but prejudice against gay people is still really super commonplace. And there's a lot of people around her who've told her that being gay is wrong, morally wrong. She'll go to hell if she's gay. She's, she's internalized a lot of the messages from that era. You know, she's a 16 year old kid. She grew up, with AIDS as a terminal illness and almost instant death. You know, HIV was just terrifying. So she's, she's internalized a lot of that scaremongering and feels guilty about it and ashamed of her desires and who she really, really likes and loves and wants to be with. And she's starting to. She's struggling with it. Mm -hmm. um, how how much older do you suppose Raven is? Are we college age? Are we talking young woman? What are we thinking here? I'm thinking probably no more than 22 years old. Okay. Somewhere in there. So, you know, like sophomore, junior in college, maybe. Maybe she went to, maybe she like did a certificate program over at the community college in town and just kind of decided that she didn't want to go be an x-ray tech or something like that. And now she's working at the head shop, just trying to make, trying to pay the bills. Awesome. Uh, and what was your family like? Dad worked at the loop and mom was kind of just a stay at home mom. And then she disappeared and no one really seemed to notice. And this is about the time that the flood happened. And now all dad really seems to do is flip through TV channels and read newspapers. And he, it always seems like he's watching the news, like he's trying to see what's going on elsewhere, see if it's this bad everywhere. But other than that, he's really kind of checked out. He doesn't really pay a whole lot of attention. He doesn't, I, he doesn't seem to care that mom's gone. He doesn't look for, he doesn't like talk to people or try to find out where she is or anything like that. Yeah. The police came and they talked to him and they left. I mean, they obviously don't think he did anything. So, but, it, but he doesn't seem worried about it at all. He just seems not there. Does that apathy extend to him? Like he, he just has left her stuff untouched or, or or how do you imagine that is in the house itself? Everything is the day. Everything is pretty much the same as it was when she left. I mean, he didn't get rid of any of her things. I mean, there's he doesn't really dust or anything like that. So there's, you know, depending on exactly what you're talking about, there's varying degrees of layers of dust on things, mm -hmm. you know, like obviously we got to wash dishes. So there's not really any dust there, but you know, you look on top of this, of the China cabinet and I mean, you're going to like bring your finger away from it and your finger is going to be like solid gray from the dust that you wiped off. Um, and I take it no siblings? No siblings. I'm an only child. Yeah. Um, and there was something else I was going to ask you. It's vanished out of my head. I'll probably uh, 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 hit you up on that when we, when we come back around. Uh, I think it's going to be... Oh, uh, uh, let me ask you. Uh, raving, how much of the, the rave culture here in wayward is is surrounded by drugs versus alcohol or is it an even mix how do you imagine that i think it's more based in drugs but mostly mdma and very infrequently hallucinogens like maybe somebody got a few hits of acid. Maybe somebody got something that they claim is a magic mushroom. And 
the way I see Tina is that she talks a good game and she buys what she thinks is MDMA. Mm -hmm. But really, a lot of times she gets ripped off because she doesn't know the difference and dealers just give her some baby aspirin. So, and, but you know, it's the power, it's the placebo effect, the power okay. of suggestion. She thinks that she's gotten some amazing stuff and it's just so great. But, you know, at the core of all of it is that she really, things are falling apart. She's trying to pretend like she doesn't really care, but she pulls the people that she cares about even closer to try to keep them safe and to try to keep them from vanishing as well. So it's interesting. It's We've got a, a group of characters who are all very much the, the outsiders. I think actually interesting that the, our seeker is probably the one who's most connected maybe with, with other, uh, other people, but somehow the group of you have, have become friends hanging out together. Um, uh, so what I want to do is I want to come back to uh, the start and we have some relationships to the other PCs, relationship to the other teams questions. Uh, this is another place where if you look at the three, if one of them, you're like, no, that doesn't make sense. Free to free to look at the other playbooks to find an, a different option. Um, and we'll go through and we'll do all three, uh, of yours at a time. Um, so let's go back to, to Lawrence. Um, uh, tell me about our lone wolf's uh, relationships to the other uh, teens. Cool. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay. Well, the questions the questions I have, uh, or the statements I have is, I think he, she is so smart, wouldn't be liked by the group if they weren't good looking. At least I don't hate him, her. And that last one, I don't know if that's like, 100% what I have in mind for Lawrence. So I might have to have a look elsewhere for that one. And feel but, free to modify that if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, um, which one of this group is the best looking? Does anyone have any opinions on this? Or it's probably Kara, right? If we're just going on heart, I think that 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 yeah, I think that that Kara certainly ranks up there. That would probably be it. Okay. The more I think on this, the more I think on all of these questions don't really apply to to okay. to, to Lawrence. Lawrence, you you might have to come back to me. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's and and you may discover something through other people's choices. Um, uh, so let's come to our street kid, then Stephen. Sure. Um, so my first one is their family took care of me whenever I was little. I think didn't Tina say that her dad worked at the Crown for the Crown as well at the Loop? Sure. Yeah, he worked at the Loop. Yeah. So I think. You know, our families know each other through that. So we took, you know, our my fa your family took care of me as, at some point when I was younger. Okay. Yeah, that, that sort of uh, passing around, you know, after school and babysitting things. So you would have known her mom before her mom vanished. Yeah. Okay. So um, I've got a second one that I pulled out. Um, I think someone thinks I'm too loud. Um, oh, that's definitely Lawrence. There we go. Okay. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> nice. Okay. And of the the other one that's on my list, I'm not sure I like, but uh, they think they're better than me. Does that fit for Kara? Does she think she's better than I am? Uh, but good. Uh <laughs> oh, Yeah, that sounds great then. Okay. I'll I'll put that down. You think Kara's kind of snooty? Uh I don't think she's necessarily snooty in like a snobbish type of sense, but instead of that, like, oh, that kind of like cooler than you type thing, uh, not cooler than you. Instead, the like mm, everyone else just kind of accepts the like surface of reality. But like I question deeper than other, you know, that like teen who has convinced themselves that they think about things more than other teens. So how about this? I'm going to uh... they really got catcher in the rye. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I'm going to say better. Kara thinks she's better than me because she knows how it really is. Nice. Yeah, that works. Wouldn't your character... Wouldn't your character actually think that Kara thinks that because you you're on the street, so you know how it, so you actually know how it really is. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just I want to make sure I understand like the nuance of the characterization there. Um. Well, well speaking of Kara, let's uh, come to Kara's picks. All right. Uh, let's take a look at these. Okay. Um. I think uh, to start with the last one on the list, I already know. Uh, that, uh, like the last one on the list there, um, is, uh, they're all right if they keep to themselves. Uh, I think that's going to be Sandra. So, okay. Uh, oh. Um, okay. So, um, I think, so one of them is my soulmate. And I'm thinking, like, it's not necessarily like a romantic thing, but I think uh, it might be uh, a Tina um, type of a thing. I'm good with that. Yeah. And then, like, especially if, like, uh, there could be interesting thing there if, like, uh, Tina comes out to uh, Kara at some point. She might, like, uh, not know if that says something about her, et cetera. Well... There's a line on Tina's that says we're best friends, and I was thinking that the one that made the most sense was Kara. So, yep. nice. Uh, and so the last one I've got is I'm tired of them questioning me. Does that fit with uh, Lawrence at all? Um, it, it depends on how we phrase uh, questioning. Um, I was thinking actually, perhaps we. Well, no, I'm not 100% sure on what else I would put for, for Kara, but um, what would I be questioning you about? Like, what would I be like, I, I don't know. I don't really have the context of how that would apply. Are you, are you more of a logic person? Um, you are smart. I mean, Kara is yeah. a little more uh, crystals and, and deep reality and that kind oh. of thing. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yes, if Tom's more of a skeptic type of a thing, that could work right there. Or even if not like a skeptic, yeah. but like not uh, buy into uh, sort of uh, Kara's woo, as it were. Yeah, yeah. I think he's very much against the woo in general. Yeah, yeah, but that makes sense. It, like yeah. he, he could see him as questioning him when, you know, he like, you know, uh, doesn't ask about like, you know, some, you know, woo she's getting up to. And she's like, oh, if you just like, you know, feel instead of think and you know stop like asking all these questions you know yeah okay i think that works you just kind of unfocus your eyes and you can see the aura it's right there uh, and then uh uh oh yeah so that gets you all three of those um which brings us to christine all right so relationships to other teens um, the first statement is they don't seem to like me, but I'm going to change that. And I think I'd kind of like to modify that to, I don't think Sandra likes me much anymore, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to change that. Does, it, does that work for you? Is it like maybe they had some kind of falling out or something like that? Or And, and I figure it was probably about money or maybe about your mom. Could have been. Yeah. You're still friends, but but the like depth of your friendship is changed. The quality of it, it's been tested. Not necessarily that it's been changed or it's not there, but it's been tested and hasn't yet been mended. Okay, Does that sound good. All righty. Then the next one is we're best friends. And I think that's got to be Kara. Even if, you know, maybe Kara thinks that Tina's a little flighty, shall we say? Yeah. I, I, I not, also not think it's enough. In a uh, small town like this, like, obviously, like, Kara's sort of going like the uh, uh, 
goth angle type of thing. I think in a town this small, uh, the goths and the ravers have to kind of stick together a little bit too. And you know, that was when I was in high school. It was the punks and the uh, goths and everybody else who didn't listen to Top Forty. Yeah. So punks, goths, metalheads, we all figured it out. So, and then the last one is I adore them. And I think that's got to be Lawrence. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Cool. And, and why do you adore them? He feels like the brother that I never had and always wanted. Oh, damn. Nice. Cool. And I, and I don't like it. I don't like when people make fun of him and you know, you just, it, it's kind of one of the, it, it's kind of like a familial protective thing. Okay. Like, you know, chosen family type stuff. Yeah. Although she wouldn't have the language to put it that way at that time. I think, yeah, that's perfect. Cool. Um, and so then let's uh, swing back to, to Lawrence. Yeah, so in the process of answering these questions, I've sort of filled out all of them with the original three questions. So that's perfect. Um, so at least I don't hate Sandra. So, because um, Sandra's definitely too loud, um, but I don't hate her. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, Kara wouldn't be liked by the group if they weren't so good looking. And uh, I think Tina's so smart. Uh, because I think what we've got it here is that Lawrence is a bit um, sort of uh, super arrogant and kind of up himself a little bit, um, simply because. So I think that's playing back into the stereotype of the lone wolf, and I'm pretty happy with how this is like played out a bit. Um, I think the connection with Tina is a bit more about the music as well, because um, uh, like the hip hop and rave back then were yeah, kind of exactly. close. Yeah, exactly. And the whole connection to like, um, even though uh, Lawrence doesn't like parties and stuff that much, uh, he he's all about the music. So, um, like, if if he ever found himself at a party, he'd probably either be um, pretty happy going through uh, the record crates and like figuring out, putting, giving stuff to give to whoever's playing music and stuff like that. He would he would be pretty happy doing that. Now, with the so smart, could you maybe drill into that a little bit more? Because the, the idea of Tina is that she's not, I mean, she goes to school, she does okay, yeah. but like she can she's basically not. field strip a PA system and reassemble it and like five minutes flat to get the party going again type thing. I like, see. She's good at what she needs to know, but, but that's about it. you know, she's not, you're not going to be talking about algebra or something with her. No. So you know about music, and music is like um, Lawrence's. Uh, like one of his two like core passions. Okay. He's, yeah. So, and if you if you know anything about or you can like uh, talk about music in pretty much like uh, hip hop or rave music in pretty much any way, he he will like one hundred percent respect pretty much anyone more than, than that based on that because it's what he he's the same. Like uh, he he'll um, borrow borrow uh, music from his parents' shop all the time, anytime, they don't seem to care. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he would, it would be based on that, like you, you, you're interested in the right things. Awesome. I might rewrite that slightly to reflect that a bit, but. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, what, what I wanna do is we're going to get a few hooks that we're gonna pick um, and uh, uh, then we're going to uh, kind of get a little bit of setup talking about the, the group and uh, I want to sort of the last stage of, of character creation. Um, Steven, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, if in the folder there is a list of tales from the things from the flood, I'm going to get tales and things mixed up every time. Um, uh, uh, things from the flood hooks. Um, I just want you to pick me one of those. Sure thing. That, I have that's, one picked out. Okay, what is that one? Um, some whisper about robots out in the evacuation zone, but rum rumors have bubbled up about others close to home. Not humanoid or even big machine, but robot animals stalking wayward at night. Okay. When and where did you see an animal that you were pretty sure wasn't natural? Okay, all right, so that's your pick. And then uh, let's come to 
Uh, Wade, I want you to pick uh, another one of those. Oh, my microphone is off. Um, let's see. Uh, I think uh, the uh, few nights ago, uh, a rave out close to the vac zone got broken up. Uh, when a bunch of armed thugs in black rushed the place, no one's sure who they were. Cops, gang members, crown industrial operatives, or some uh, some guy private security company. A uh, few people got injured, but who has gone missing since the incident, and how do you know them? Okay. And then for the third and last one, uh, Pocket, would you please pick one of those? Uh, the local head shop has been coming under increasing pressure from local authorities. The shop responded by adding a whole new comic section and memorabilia section, but was broken into recently, and something weird was stolen from a recently acquired collection. What was it? Okay. So now we have those three on the table. With those three on the table, Tom, point me to one. Is it Animal Robots, Rave Raid, or Local Head Shop Broken Into? It helps if I'm not muted. Um, okay. uh, uh, it's definitely the rave. Okay. Yeah. Rave, rave. Um, and uh, this, I'm going to put this uh, in the context of, of your character then. Um, who is it who's gone missing? Oh, and how do you know them? So it's like a, um, uh, a local sort of big wig DJ, like um, for, for the town at least. Um, so I know them because they they spend time hanging out at a parent shop. Uh, yeah, I think I think they would. They'd be like um, a regular customer of of my parents' shop for sure. They 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 they're getting the the sort of the uh, the, the 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 long uh, remix things from official things to 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 work yeah. and, and okay yeah all right and what is the DJ's name uh, DJ name or real name or like uh, uh, well DJ name of course Rust um, I'm terrible at this one sec did you just say Rust. Yes, DJ Russ. DJ Rust. All right, post a post flood DJ. All yeah. right, I was like, wait, that that sounds perfect, actually. Not what I said, but it's perfect. Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to kind of set up in the situations where we're going to do uh, an everyday life scene to to look into your characters. We'll figure out where the four of you hang out. Um, we won't, we'll, we'll talk about the friction in the group later, but we'll kind of talk about at that point, how you are friends. And then we have these three things sort of on the table with one, maybe at the top, but we can lean into one of the other things. So, uh, that is the situation. So let's take five, um, or, uh, six. So it'll get right back at uh, the 30 after and, uh, uh, we'll come back.
Stephen, you'll be pleased to know that I had a a quick guest appearance from another Gabriel for the final session of the the masks thing. Nice. <laughs> so make sure that I, I pulled everything full circle there. Um. So, uh, Pocket, you're back. I'm back. Okay. Go check. Uh. So, uh. Ordinarily, the, the game kind of moves between sort of everyday life scenes, and then we go to investigations and we kind of flip back to, to move to that. So we're, we're going to take a bit to, to, to look at that, that life. So, uh, Sandra, um, when we come in, it's a, it's a, a school day, um, April, um, uh, let's say, I, I like Thursdays because it means you've got, you know, just a couple of days for the weekend. Um, what what do we see uh, of you getting up? What, what what's the apartment look like? What's that 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 getting ready for school look like for you? Um, so the way it looks is, I, so I get up for school. It's late. Um, I'm probably rushing to get things together. Um, everybody else is already out of the house. Um, they get up early to go, you know, go out and beat the street looking for jobs. Um, I'm kind of more of a slacker. I throw on some clothes. I think I grab a bowl of cereal and eat it dry on my way to school. I don't think we're too far from the school where this apartment is. Let me, let me pause here as you're kind of getting ready, getting ready to, to head out of the apartment uh, now. Uh, 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 like how many how many f floors is this apartment building? I figure only three or four. Okay. Um, uh, and so as you are, are getting ready, you will hear the, the key in the lock at the front door. And I basically, I look at it for a second. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised because no one should be back this early, but you know, I know I'm going to get yelled at for being late for school and I grab my stuff real quick and head towards the door to go out as mom or dad comes in. Door opens and you'll see it's the landlord. And I kind of stop in my tracks. And he looks a little startled to see you. Oh, sorry. Didn't know anyone was home. I uh, was going to check out the, the... We had some problems with some plumbing, so I, I wanted to take a look at the bathroom. You're supposed to tell us before you do that. I get up in his face. I think I drop my book bag and I get up in his face. Get up in his face and uh, uh, you want to try and and, and like... You can get him to change his mind about coming into here? Yeah. Um, basically, I want him to change his mind until he lets my parents know. Okay. He's supposed to give us notice. Um, and so why don't you roll charm? Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. And the roller is at the top of the second page, second tab there, and I'll drop it in the... Do you mind tab. if I roll dice? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, yeah feel free to. Uh, I got zero sixes. Okay. Now you've got a choice. Um, uh, if you think this is important, you could push it and mark a condition. Um, uh, or you could in invoke your shame or uh, you could just let it go. I'm just going to let it go. I don't think this is important. And he's he gets in your face and he goes, I gave notice. Your parents have not replied back. And I am coming in here. And he pushes past you. Should you be at school? She goes, shitty landlord, grabs her books and heads out the door. Um, and and as you, you are heading down, you realize he didn't have any tools with him. Uh -huh. um, and so how far away from school do you think you are? Oh, just like three or four blocks. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, are you cutting it close or are you late? Late. Um, I'm going to be late. Okay. I think that like, yeah. It's close, but no, I'm definitely late. What what did what is your procedure for getting around that? Are you do you sneak in? Do you go in brazenly? What what do you think that looks like? I sneak in, and I think that what it looks like is uh, usually the smokers leave one of the side doors propped open with like a rock, mm -hmm. and I open the door there, and I sit in the back 
So basically, I go to my homeroom, I go wherever I'm supposed to be, and I try and slip in and so that the teacher's not noticing. Okay. Yeah, you get through that 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 uh, area by the the side door where they've got the the ashtrays out there for the teens um, uh, that just sort of reeks perpetually, and uh, uh, you will 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 sneak your way on in. Um, maybe a little ner nervous because you know your parents are having some tension with the landlord and pissing him off. Maybe not the best plan. Um, I think that there's a little you know as you see this on screen. She's nervous, but it also comes out as anger, like she's acting out towards it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, let's come to to Kara. Um, uh, is it? Do you want to say Kara or Kara? I think Kara. Okay. Um, so Kara, in the the morning, um, what what's her routine look like? Um, I think uh, when we see her, uh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, less um frantic and more just like you know her alarm goes she probably sets her alarm you know early and then like is one of those people who hits snooze three times type of a thing and um i'm imagining like a small but like very crowded with like clothes and stuff bedroom and just sort of slowly shuffling out of bed and sort of in that kind of like early morning teenager haze and probably her Parents are, uh, her mom may or may not be up. Uh, her dad's probably out of the house already. And she's, you know, just kind of, you know, gets, makes some toast or whatever. Yeah. Actually, when you get up and go down, go down to the kitchen, uh, you know, walk, walk around the kitchen, um, you hear your mother like already up and, and like in the front room, like moving some things around. Yeah. Unusual. Uh, I think, uh, I think like, First thing in the morning, like Kara probably does that thing where she like walks right past it without like really realizing anything first and like does that stop back up a couple steps and then sort of peer into the living room. And you can see that your mom is like she's gone through and she's moved everything off of uh, the couch and the couple of matching chairs that are in there. She's got those uh, like cleared and she's kind of moved them forward weirdly in the room okay uh carol just go like squint to be like mom what are you doing and she stops that kind of deer in the headlights kind of caught thing um and she says um uh oh wasn't happy with these pieces so uh we're we're getting some others so they're going to come by today and and pick these up and um, we're getting some other pieces in here. I just didn't like what they did with the room. Carol, just like pause for a second, then be kind of be like, "Can we afford like new stuff?" It, you, sh you don't need to be worrying about any of that. You should just you, you should. Are you going to be late for school? Carol, just give like a big lost cause kind of sigh, and then continue kind of shuffling on as she knows there's no point in having that discussion. And, and what do you suppose you, is, is your kitchen nice? Is it, is it well stocked? Is it marginally stocked? What do you imagine? Um, you know, I think there, it's the type of thing where um, it's the, the kitchen is like, you know, in terms of the apartment uh, is fine, but it's, it's like a mess. Like, uh, her parents aren't the types who like keep track of what's in the kitchen. Say, oh, we need more of this and more of that. They more just like when mom comes home from the grocery store, she's like, oh, I think we need this, this, and this type of a thing. So they'll be like, it's one of those things where you'll see the same box of cereal that's like been half eaten three times. You know what I mean? And and yeah, you you'll have that. Do you do you think that when you get that done and and ready to head out, uh, do you? Are you within walking distance? Do you get a ride with a friend? Do you take the bus? Uh, I think uh, probably walking distance. Probably like a relatively long walk, but um, Kara doesn't mind that, you know. Okay. Uh, so it means that we suggest that, that you and Sandra probably live reasonably within walking distance of one another. Yeah, and you walk in uh, uh, April, Ohio, uh, late 90s, probably rained a little bit. Um, so... 
cool but not cold um uh there and uh um you have to to watch out for your hair um and make sure you get the right product for that especially with a little bit of humidity there um is, is it is her hair something that she spends a lot of time on it it looks like in the picture but but uh, you know for some uh, uh girls that that comes very naturally and for some they have to work at it you know i i think uh i think a lot of what kara does is uh it's stuff that does come relatively naturally and she's just like working to her strengths as opposed to you know uh necessarily like spending huge amounts of time obviously some like the makeup takes some time to do and things like that but um you know she she's working with her strengths okay uh then uh let's come to christine uh christine um when when you get up what what does your room look like well, it's got posters there's pillows kind of tossed around it's bright everything's brightly colored it's all basically it looks like a box of fruit loops exploded but okay. with furniture so you know it, it's very early 90s rave posters you know just like flyers lots of day glow lots of smiley faces it just uh basically a teenage girl's room cranked up to 12 okay with like day glow bracelets here and jelly bracelets over there and pants that are like twice her her length like if she if she put them on her head, she would still be swimming in them. Tennis shoes, maybe a skateboard. You know, just does it, does it, she do a lot of skate, skating's big during this time? Beg pardon? Does she board? Uh, you know, it's pretty big during this time, or is it just an affectation? I think she skates occasionally as transportation. Okay, but. She is not what you would consider a skater. Her idea of a trick is not falling off and tearing her pants or ripping her pants or shirts or injuring herself. And how wildly do you dress when you go to school? Are you do you are you over the top? For that? I think she has to be kind of conservative for that because of school dress codes. I mm -hmm. mean, particularly at the time. I mean, schools were not especially tolerant and growing less so. So. She may wear some big pants that have some pretty decent bell bottoms, but they're not going to be dragging eight inches behind her. You know, she's not going to be wearing the skater jeans of the time period. She may wear, say, some day glow clothing, but it's not going to have anything about candy flipping on it. Uh, and uh, what what is breakfast for for Christine? Fruit Loops, of course. Okay. I mean, it's heavily sugared and it's brightly colored. What more? What? Why wouldn't why wouldn't I eat it? I mean, it's yeah. And oh. uh, you get your stuff together. Uh, you go. You see, uh, your dad um, hasn't quite left for work yet. He's on the lazy boy. Got the, the recliner feet up, and he's got CNN on, and he's just kind of uh, um, munching on uh, uh, raisin bran and uh, uh, watching that. Kind of doesn't even acknowledge you coming through. Hey, Dad. Ah, uh, hey. You uh, getting? You gonna get ready for work? Uh, yeah. I mean, I got everything packed. I was just uh, catching this before I took off. Did? Because it doesn't look like you went to work yesterday. I mean, that's the same thing you had sitting there, and it's in the same spot as it was when I went to school yesterday. Well, I went to work. Probably should have changed today. Maybe I should. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's, I, I, I guess people do that from time to time. I mean, might be worth a shot. He munches more on his raisin bran. Kind of just looks at you. I'm uh, I'm gonna get going to school. Um, I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay, I'll so I'll see you when you get home. I guess. Mm. 
and I walk out the door. Do you walk to school? Do you take the bus? Do you ride with someone? I'm thinking, I'm thinking walking and it's close enough for the school. Well, close enough to walk far enough that the school district makes people take a bus when it's winter or when it's snowing, you know, okay. so you don't get, so you don't get stuck in a blizzard. So, you know, it's, uh, probably in the neighborhood of like, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe half mile, three quarters of a mile walk. Okay. That seems, that seems fair. Um, and you're, you're walking down the sidewalk and, and heading in and, uh, you will see, uh, a car park beside the street and you see this woman get out and you will realize it's your aunt, uh, your mom's sister. Um, Beverly? yeah. And, uh, she's like, Oh, Hey, Tina. Um, what are you, what are you doing here? I, I, I was, uh, 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 going to show a house later, but it uh, got canceled. So I was parking and redoing my Rolodex. I, I had completely missed that I was in this neighborhood. Do you need a, a ride to work, to school, to where you're going? Um, I guess. I mean, I, I won't say no. And I mean, she, yeah, get in. And she has you, you know, opens the door. Is very clearly been waiting for you. And uh, uh, um, you see she gets in there and uh, kind of waits for you to, to hop in. Buckle the seatbelt. She says, um, so, so how are you holding up? I... Yeah, I... Uh... Can we talk about something else? I mean, I'm on my way to school and I... I, yeah, no, I just, uh, I, I just I, had a co like a question for you. Yeah, what's 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 going on? Had you heard anything from your mom recently? If I'd heard anything from her, I would have told everybody. I, I, I haven't. I walked out the door that day going to school, and I haven't seen her since i haven't heard from her since i mean not even a not even a postcard i, I just I, I i wanted to ask you because i called your dad a couple of times a couple of three times now um and he hasn't called me back at all he <sighs> He's been weird, Aunt Bev. I he just weird, and she her eyes narrow. Weird how? Like clearly seemed, that's a bell for her. Like he's just checked out. He just I like he sits on the couch all the time and he watches TV and he's always watching like news. I this morning when I was leaving, he said he was getting ready for work, but all of his stuff was exactly where it was yesterday morning like it hadn't even moved and he said he went to work i don't i don't know if he's going to work i don't know if he's i don't know what's going on it's just weird and she does kind of just kind of nods like like she's mulling that over in her head she doesn't say anything more um uh it, but but drives you and drops you off at school and says hey if if you if you need anything, just just call me. Okay, I will. Um, you know, if you're if you're worried or uncomfortable around your dad or anything like that, or you feel threatened or anything, you can always give me a call. I, you know, it's 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 not that I. It's just it's not that. It's just weird. It's like I I don't know how to explain it, Aunt Bev. I mean, it's it's not like I'm. It's, he's just acting weird. Oh, oh, okay. No, no I, I don't want to. Don't want to. Yeah. Um. Do you think? Do you think maybe I could come over for dinner one of these nights? I mean, he's not really cooking, and it's like 
could spend a lot of craft mac and cheese for a while. And you see her do that kind of thing where she, she runs it through her head. She's not married. Uh, she dates a lot. She says, yeah, just, just give me a call and we'll, 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 we'll work something out. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll go out and have dinner. Okay. Thanks, Aunt Bev. I appreciate it. And that brings us to our lone wolf, to Lawrence. Lawrence, what does uh, your getting up and preparing, what does that look like for you? Uh, so Lawrence, um, Lawrence would get dropped off to school by his parents. Uh, so he would be up because they have to, they have to open the shops. So they have to be uh, in there before night. So he'll probably get dropped off to school early. What time is, start time for school is like nine o'clock? Uh, more, more like more like seven thirty eight. Oh really? No. Oh. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah, they they're they're up. You see, they've got the yeah. like the 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 catalogs, uh, that they get from the different different distributors and things. And they're kind of working through those in the morning, and mm -hmm. they're like, I don't know. That seems like a flash in the pan. I don't know, Anima. I just I just it's it's. it's, it's I just one they were talking about this blue seed kind of thing. Maybe blah 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 blah. And on my one half, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, they're they're kind of worked that. Oh, hey Lawrence, do they call you Lawrence? Uh, yeah. Okay. Or L. And yeah. uh, God, uh, are you ready to, to for school? Yep, all ready to go. Uh, okay. Lawrence would be in his usual, usual attire, the same hoodie every day. Um, um, yeah, just stand sneakers and that sort of stuff. Nothing out of and your mom says, you can let me wash that this weekend? Yeah, sure. All right. Missively. Um, she says, uh, we, uh, we have a late inventory tonight. Um, we're probably going to be uh, not back till till after 10. Uh, so, uh, I've put, uh, some, uh, TV dinners, uh, are, uh, in the, the freezers. We've got some Weight Watchers, um, and we've tucked them in there and, uh, they're really some neat, they've got like a, like an, uh, a, a, like a, a noodle, Chinese noodle one with these, uh, these peas. Okay. Uh, and they'll gather them. So if your father kind of gives your mom a, a little bit of a, a dirty look, um, but, uh, what kind of car um, is it? Is it a van? Is it uh, a, a little car? Is it a big car? It would be like an ordinary sort of sedan. So it wouldn't be a small car. It would be just something that could get around in a in a, in a midwest town like this. Yeah. Do you imagine does does Lawrence do any like school activities? The, uh, anything school or after school? Um, he would. Um, it depends, I guess. Really, um, he he wouldn't do any sports. Okay. Uh, he would do, like he would he would do whatever he can to get out of that. Um, uh, but what other stuff would you have in mind? Like oh, it's different here in Australia. So, so uh, classic uh, high school things would be drama club. Um, would be uh, Glee Club. It would be oh, yeah. band um, or orchestra or a school newspaper or yearbook. Um, some of that stuff meets after school. Some doesn't. Yeah. So would say, don't do any of that. Yeah, um, he probably wouldn't wouldn't really be that interested. He would probably spend some time at the library, but I don't know if like that would qualify as like an actual uh, okay. Activity. I, yeah. I think that's fair. Um, and uh, uh, your dad says, so uh, So, got big plans for this weekend? Uh, no, I was just going to um, uh, pick up something from the school library and, and see. There's a couple of new things coming in this week. Um, so I was hoping um, just to, to knuckle down and, and get some reading done. They're doing a big uh, antiquing show at the mall lots of people bringing in their baseball card collections and movie posters and that kind of thing you should you should stop by yeah uh uh would they have any like uh what about music 
no, no, actually, on second thought, no, he would respond him to be again like, okay, sure, and okay. just sort of shrug it off. And uh, they, they're they're trying to engage with your interests, but and they they try that tact, and then they they're quickly done with it. They've at least yeah. uh, done uh, what they consider due diligence, um, uh, and and drop you off uh, at school. So, if we cut forward with the four of you uh, to sometime after school, your friends. Um, you have some free time when you hang out where do you hang out is it do you hang out at a particular store that has some hang around space is it a park is it at the school library after school where where would you think that would be any ideas from anybody i'll uh, i'll pose an open question to the table Do you think it's a public place, private space, somebody's house? I um, oh, go ahead. If you got it. No, oh, you you had some. Uh, I was thinking uh, maybe like um, uh, you know uh, one of those like secluded outdoor spaces, right? Like not in a private residence or something, but some place they've carved out where they're like outdoors, um, but they're fairly confident that they can like hang out unobserved like exactly. a, a small park maybe not that far away from school with uh, that that has one of those sort of covered awning concrete places with some tables that kind of thing water fountain maybe maybe there's a couple of vending machines in there uh, that makes perfect sense to me yeah, really old sodas it's all rc cola and upper 10 and uh you know 50 50 all the Canfield stuff coming out of Chicago distribution, terrible sodas that nobody drinks, um, uh, but they're super cheap. Um, uh, and then probably all the thing that's left is the the Andy Caps Red Hot uh, 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 crisps in the uh, uh, vending machine at this point. And sixlets. And sixlets, yes. <laughs> um, so the four of you are are hanging around. Um, you've heard the just the the news you know the rumors about the animal robots um we had that incident the the rave and of course uh uh you know that raven has been bitching about got getting broken into so what do you think is is the topic of discussion that uh you would start with sandra well that bitch holly at school was just all over that Aaron guy, and I just couldn't believe that she would mess with him, and you know, just shitty stuff. Um, I think the whole time, so I'm talking about stupid school stuff. But the whole time, I think I'm kind of eyeing Tina because I think some of the tension between us comes from her mom disappearing and no one talking about it. And I am conspicuously avoiding talking about DJ Rust. I think around school, everyone else is talking about it. You walk down the hallway, everyone's talking about it. I'm trying desperately to not talk about it. Tina, is that something you you notice? Is something you want to talk about? What what's what's your take on this? How how did you know Rust? Well. I carried his crates in for him a few times. You know, he'd let me listen to some white label releases. You know, he's kind of, he was sort of starting to teach me like how to, how to actually mix and do some beat mixing, but we weren't really close. I mean, he just, I don't know. I think he just saw me and, you know, I was I was always kind of train spotting, and I think he appreciated that somebody was trying to learn a little bit more about what he was doing and how, and not just because I wanted to be cool, but because I, I wanted to like I wanted to know. And I I kind of don't know what to do. I mean, he was he was really the only DJ in town. 
I mean, there's probably, probably not probably other amateurs, but he's probably the one that actually the one who could get the parties going. Yeah, I mean, he's the one who could make people show up. I mean, look, I I know he's trying, but Steve has to realize that DJ Pumpkin is never going to take off. It's not going to be a thing ever. I mean, DJ Rust sounds cool. I mean, it, it, we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, and everything's burned out and broken down and falling apart. I mean, it just kind of, it's evocative, you know? But DJ Pumpkin, I mean, who calls themselves DJ Pumpkin? Who comes up with that? And uh, what, Kara, what's what's your go-to in this this sort of weird conversation of absences? Um, I think, uh, I think I'm, uh, sort of like, uh, listening to this and like, uh, maybe like, uh, you know, throwing out some like theories that are like maybe half a joke, uh, but like, half like you know um half like you know real type of a thing like you know oh maybe like maybe like russ was like you know extraterrestrial or something like that and they abducted him and be hot for that reason type of a thing it's like mostly kind of just like trying not to take things too seriously and kind of make a joke but like kind of just like floating weird shit out there to see how people react And as you all are sitting there kind of talking um, and you've got maybe a field that you can see across stand of woods is probably a baseball diamond in the distance, you know, um, and speak of the devil. Uh, you see DJ pumpkin, uh, you know, walking along the sidewalk quite a ways away. Um, what, what is uh, Lawrence, the, the the piece of clothing or or thing that makes you go oh yeah there, there's pumpkin um so he he has um like a signature sort of get up that he goes around it and it's absolutely terrible it's like bright orange like his namesake and it's just horrendous it's yeah. it's it's about about five years too old or oh yeah it's just bad it's like it's hip-hop clothing that doesn't really look like hip-hop clothing it's yeah. bad Kind of a, a little bit of, of weird fluorescent orange where the fluorescent is worn off and it's it's yeah. all of a piece. Um, he's got a backpack over his shoulder with his his stuff in it that uh, is the same color. Um, um, and uh, you four will see this screech and see this van kind of you know uh, uh, black panel van, no windows pull up, screech right up next to uh, uh, Pumpkin. Side door comes open, and you see him stop, and these two guys grab him, throw him inside, and slam the side door shut. Um, uh, like, they, they, he tries to, to move away, but they don't, the, you know, kind of tears his backpack open, his stuff spills out onto the sidewalk, and they begin to peel out. What the uh, hell? What do you do, Christine? I start running over there or in the general direction of the van screaming, Hey, Hey, you can't do that. Um, and, and you probably can make it maybe, maybe half the distance by the time that car is, is peeling out. I think as Tina heads over there, I start screaming, Tina, come back. They'll take you too. <laughs> Uh, Lawrence, uh, Kara. Lawrence is just stunned. He's like, "What just happened? Is this real?" Yeah, I think uh, Kara's also like similarly like shocked, but her reaction is to like kind of like wide eyedly like wander over to like where like stuff spilled out of his backpack and like you know pick something random up and like look at it as like a 
verified that this really happened, that we actually saw what we so saw. So you're you're up and following Christine yeah. over to 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 the to the spot. Um, uh, and so the two of you can get over there. The van is gone, um, and there are tapes and uh, CDs and junk just kind of scattered out, you know, uh, on on the sidewalk there. I start sifting through it, like looking for. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for anything that looks like it might have any kind of bearing on what just happened. So I know I'm not looking at necessarily the CDs. Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm if I'm recognizing what it is, like you know, if there's a Prodigy CD or something like that in there, and it's got an, the actual Prodigy stuff screened on it, I know I'm not looking at that. But I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, you and Kara there, why don't one of you make an investigation role? If the other one wants to assist, they can give an extra die to that person. All righty. Um, Kara, you have a stronger skill on both. So if it's okay, I'd like to assist you. Yep, sounds good. So an extra die comes from assist. Yeah. Uh, so two sixes. Two sixes. So um, I'm going to tell you some info, and then I'm going to let you ask a, a follow-up question, you two. Um, and then I'm going to come back to to the others and see where they're at. Um, there's the standard mixtapes, including you'll see at least one that's like, uh, you know, J. Pumpkin's Slow Love Mix for Rita, you know, uh, the, one of those things that clearly put together a little Memorex tape and He's got a little like playlist thing on it. Um, and there are probably a couple of, of CDs there, um, you know, uh, purchase ones. But the thing that will strike you is that there's a jewel case with a, uh, uh, a, a CD on it uh, that like, it's like a, a, a blank CD. And it's got, it's, it's actually written on, um, and, uh, it, it says rust on it. Um, it's really unusual because burning CDs is still pretty pricey and difficult to do in this, this time. Um, so I'll let you ask follow-ups on this or anything else here. Uh, can you think of any follow-ups you want to ask? Is there... Are there any notes? Is there an address book? Anything like that in in along and among this junk? Uh, you probably see he's got like a uh, a list of some other wannabe DJs like himself, um, and um, uh, like maybe an invitation list. Like like a bunch of them got together for something. Are there like phone numbers on it and anything like that, or just yeah, I, probably probably basic contact numbers there, yeah. Okay. Um, so if if you find that, um, I would like to sort of see if um, any of those numbers are like familiar to me, like if they're something that I would have seen on like uh, I don't know purchase orders or something on, on my parents' shop. Like, yeah, I think you definitely recognize, uh, uh, you know, a couple name names on here like like sir mixmaster um and uh uh uh, uh, uh dj uh, uh splatter um are probably a, a couple that you you recognize none of these are ne nearly as strong or uh, uh talented as rust um but they're the other sort of wannabes that you know do hang out together and and sometimes get together to jam. Right. What about you, Sander? What are you doing? So I think that everybody else has gone running up 
and they start trying to pick up his stuff, and I'm like, shit, that guy doesn't need it anymore. And I kind of I pace back and forth in front of the vending machine, and I I glance around looking to see if anyone else is, you know, if anyone else is watching, and I'm like, you know, they're gonna come back, you know, and I'm just kind of cussing and pacing, and finally, I think after they've kind of sifted through, I come over and I say. We gotta leave. We gotta get out. The the you know something's gonna happen. Let's go. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's anyone else around. I don't think anyone else saw that. Yeah, but they might have seen us going toward the van. I mean, I I think I think if we've got everything, Sandra's right. I think we need to scatter. I don't think they're worried about witnesses. Like, really? They're not worried about witnesses. I'm worried about them taking you. So let's let's just bug out. I mean, go home and see your folks. Make sure that you know. Do we do we tell our parents about this? I mean, oh, hell no. I could talk to my Shit, dad. No, they can't. They can't do anything. Well, like maybe my my dad could call the cops or something. Yeah, if they were worried about the cops, they wouldn't have done it here. I mean, no one's going to take care of this for us. Maybe they are the cops. Shit. Don't, don't, they didn't seem show any badges. I mean, that that's not a it's not a police van. I mean, there was there was there was, there was be, nothing on the side. It wasn't a black and white. They could be FBI. I mean, that, that was just, pumpkin. We got to do something. I mean, it's not like the guy's a good DJ, but he's not a bad person. What do we, we got to do? We, we can't just, we can't let him vanish too. What? You, you found one of Russ's CDs in there, right? I, I don't know if it's his CD. It says Rust on it. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe there's something on there. That like maybe Rust recorded something like that uh, he shouldn't have or something. Like we should check that CD out. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, let's right. let's go back to your place because you've got all the stereo equipment because your mom and dad own the shop there. So, I mean, I mean, yeah. You'll you'll have what we. I mean, we got a CD player. Yeah, they're not gonna. Um, they they're probably they're doing inventory right now. Um, so the, the shop will be closed, but at the same time, they won't be um, they won't be happy to like entertain us kids doing their thing when they get in the way. But I can give it a shot. I can see if they don't mind. So you're thinking rather than going to your house and using your home stereo stuff, going to the shop? Um, oh, um, I would have thought that CD like CD plays would still be rare enough. But I think it makes sense they would have one at my parents' house actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, we'll just go back to my house. Lawrence, have you brought them back to your house before? Is that Shit, no. No. No, we haven't. Nope. So I, are you a little nervous about that? I am now, since we're suddenly considering doing it when they wouldn't have thought about doing it in a world. A world at all before. But, yeah, like, you're like, oh, yeah, just my house. It's fine. Um, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. So... Uh, I take it then uh, the four of you will, will head to, to Lawrence's? I will. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, it's probably, uh, you know, uh, a, a good walk uh, uh, to get to there since he's a little bit further out than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so probably maybe like 4.30, 5 o'clock uh, by the yeah. time you get back to the house. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, what color is this house is it is it something striking or is it particularly beige or something else it is completely unremarkable it is um yeah uh, very very standard colors for 10 15 years ago uh yeah not, nothing super remarkable about it at all it's, um yeah it and all of you can be struck by how basic how uh uh standard the the house is um oh so let me then have have a little, little, little paint the scene um uh uh so sandra when when you come in um what's the thing that you see in the house that uh, uh tells you 
you know, that the parents are uh, into music, but purely as like a business kind of thing. Um, it is framed posters on the wall, but they're of all of the best selling kind of, you know, albums, not so it's a mix of tastes. Mm -hmm. It's not like they like jazz and they have jazz posters on the wall. It's the best sellers that are on the wall. Uh, yeah. And uh, um, let me ask then uh, Kara, um, what, what is the, the, the decor sort of layout of the, the room that has the stereo? Um, uh, is it just an ordinary sitting room? Is it, is it set up to be a, an audio room? Um, is it plastic on the couches? What what do you what do you imagine there? Uh, yeah, I'm imagining like you know um, a sort of dedicated audio room, but like um, no plastic on the couches, but almost like it's more meant to show off the equipment than it is to actually relax and listen. If you know what I mean, like everything is very clean and it looks like used less than you would actually think. They've got the nice Bose speakers and things like that. And, uh, you know, they've got the the high-end receiver, you know, with a couple of CD players and, you know, multiple tape things and a very nice turntable um, uh, uh, with a lot of, of records down below with the plastic still on them. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I need to leave for just a second. My, there's a knock at my door. I'll be back. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Tina, what is the thing that you see as you're kind of moving through the house and looking that kind of makes you maybe a little resentful, maybe a little jealous? It looks really normal. Like the kind of normal that you see in movies that's supposed to indicate a happy family, but not the kind of movies that where you see the, that the family just looks happy and is really deeply miserable. It's the kind of normal where the family looks happy and actually kind of is happy. And they all kind of, you know, they, they have trouble, but they talk it through and they love each other and, it's the stuff that I don't see at my house anymore. Nice. Um, and then Lawrence, how do you, I mean, you have guests over entertain. I mean, what do you do? I mean, is it just, hey, let's throw our stuff down and go in the room or is it, is it something else? So like, yeah. Um, Lawrence is sort of like, uh, politeness will, um, sort of like kick in. He knows he's supposed to be like be doing things as a host for when people come over, but he's never really done it before and his parents don't do it either. So, or at least not that often. Um, so he's sort of like, um, do, do any of you guys want a drink? And he'll check the fridge to see that there is a drink. Uh, yeah. reasons. Sunny, sunny D. <laughs> Something like that, yeah, that'll do. Um, uh, he'll, he'll check like the cupboards. Um, we don't have a whole lot of food here, but... Um, or, or rather they would, but it's not like, uh, not like Lawrence knows how to cook at all. So probably, probably some stuff like, like, uh, you know, chips, uh, yeah. you know, Doritos, uh, the, the hot new cool ranch flavor, um, all, all of that kind of thing. Probably yeah. some fruit roll-ups. Uh, yep, yeah, that makes sense. That checks out. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, uh, are you worried about them making a mess here? Are you worried about just entertaining them? What 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 is what is your anxiety coming from? Um, it, it's because he's uh, it's unfamiliar, uh, like uh, and like they're in a space where he like normally there, there's no one else. It's just him and his parents. So they're sort of like they're inside the the, the the safe space right now. So um so he's kind of anxious about like um disrupting the normal dynamic a bit it, it's it's just because it's like um it's not familiar okay yeah uh, and you guys can get set up got snacks got some chips because there's nothing like 
like a, a, a horrible orange flavored juice beverage and Doritos. Um, uh, so you, you got that uh, all there. Um, and you're going to put the CD in and listen to it? 100%. And, you know, it goes in and you can see right away on the display that it's it's one single track, like a mono track on there. Um, and you push play and for a little bit there's silence and then there's some static like someone's tuning something in and then it'll it kind of takes a second because you hear this voice kind of come in and out and you'll hear four four seven four to begin transmission and then you'll start hearing these sounds and that they're they're weird they're like at first you think maybe it's like whale noises um uh but you realize that there's there that, that it's sort of in that but you're also hearing maybe like some percussive taps at the background um, and it moves from being rhythmic to arrhythmic and it's it's weird um, and it seems to kind of start cycling through these sections um, uh, and it's it's not like anything you've heard before doesn't exactly sound like a synthesizer And then from another part of their house, you hear a poof, 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 poof. Oh. Uh, oh, shit. I'll, I'll be right back for this one, one minute. Oh, my God. Uh, and I'll go investigate. I'm assuming this is my dog. Yeah. You go and uh, you walk. And, Sandra goes with him. Okay. Kind of follow behind. And uh, you're walking along. And kind of follow the sound and you smell like a like a little bit of a burning like a little bit of plastic burning oh okay right and you will come in to your TV room uh huh and you'll see that the the TV screen is on static is playing but the thing that you'll see is you've got a VCR below it. Um, uh -huh. And uh, you will see that the VCR is buckling and bowing. And you will see this pink bruised sort of flesh mass starting to pour out of the front of where the, v the, the tape would go in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We need to uh, go, go get the others. Um. Sandra just screams. Yep. <laughs> I come running. Yeah, me too. All right. Yeah. Uh, and and the, you, Sandra screams. She looks panicked. And you will see the thing. It doesn't get that much bigger, but you will see this thing in, in a pretty rapid order, you know, kind of buckle and... Uh, distend with the machine cancer. We got to get this thing out of here. And Sandra's hyperventilating. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, wow. Uh, Lawrence, quick, unplug, unplug stuff. We got to get this thing out of here before it gets anything else. So, uh, Lawrence will like, uh, Go one step further and said, I'll cut the fuses and, and he'll go out. He'll run to the front door and, and go out outside and uh, um, and just start open up the fuse box and just turn stuff off. Okay. Like the whole house. Yeah. All right. And you can hit the master breaker. And yeah. It, and of course, it'll go dark in the room that you three are in. Um, 
because uh, it's got got curtain heavy curtains on the windows to keep the light out. And so now yeah. the three of you, uh, Kara, uh, Lawrence, uh, sorry, Kara, uh, Tina, and Sandra are in this room with Sandra, probably the sound of her hyperventilating, um, and maybe just this this weird, slightly uh, uh, tinted glow from this VCR thing. So, Tina, Kara, what do you do? Kara, do you see anything? Any, any like oven mitts or anything that we can like use to like touch this thing? I don't want to touch it with like hands. We um, gotta get a. I, I I can't see much of anything right now. Uh, why why we like open these curtains a crack? We could use the curtains. Or we could use the curtains. <laughs> and we would have both light and something heavy to yeah. carry things with. You could easily yank one of these curtains off the rod to use. I'm going to be a horrible house guest and yank a curtain down. Okay. Good. Figuring that his parents will probably be more okay with losing a curtain than losing an expensive television. Okay. Yeah, do it. Uh, so you yank that down, and then you're going to try and, and get this thing unplugged and wrapped up? I'm just yanking stuff at this point. I'm not okay. even trying really to unplug it. I'm like, if the cable gets, you know. Well, let's have you roll Tinker. All right. Uh, so let's see. So Tinker plus tech, correct? Yes. All right. Yes. There's six. And then did you want to help out like with ripping things or trying to wrap it up or anything, Kara? Yes, uh, absolutely. Like Kara's going to help like ripping down the curtain and like just try to, you know, stay calm and pull stuff out. We'll give you the, the extra die for that. All right. Because I'm figuring at this point, Sandra's still hyperventilating and is probably not help be able to help. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll come back to Sandra in just one minute. Um, All right. We've got two sixes. Two sixes. So you I mean, unplug the, 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 the red white from the back and the, 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 so I got the, I got the RCA cables and the coax out. I would say the coax that uh, they've got a little uh, connected to get a receiver here for this. You got to pull all that out. And this thing, as you, even as you wrap it up, you feel that kind of, like weird fleshy pulsation from it even under the the curtains this um, is so gross uh sandra they, they they rip the curtains down they put some light in the room they're getting that um you know that lawrence is on his way back you're kind of freaking out what do you what do you do so i think that you know i'm wide-eyed and i'm in the back and whenever i see you know Tina and Kara kind of grab a hold of this thing with the curtains. I start to whimper because I think this I've seen, you know, it it's kind of a flashback of in my dreams, the tentacles come out and grab a hold of people by their arms and they can't let go. And, you know, I'm starting to, you know, get it out, get it out, get it out. And and you kind of are in the doorway of this room and off to your left, little short corner, because we'll always want to have it pretty close to the TV room, is the kitchen that you were in just a little bit ago getting the drinks and stuff. And you hear some, like, popping sounds from there. And I think I jump. And then I kind of, you know, it's that slow motion walk back towards the kitchen and poke my head around. And again, the power is out, so you're getting just the light from the the dusk coming in from the windows onto that. Um, and you will see the microwave kind of shifting slowly on the counter, turning and moving on the counter. Like it's a robot or like it's a worm? Like something's vibrating in it and doing that kind of like making it move and shift. Mm. Um, 
so I I look around and I you know I start saying uh Lawrence and I raise my Lawrence and I think what? there's probably yeah. a broom nearby. Okay. And I'm going to start pushing at the microwave towards the glass door or something like that towards you know pushing the microwave out with the broom. Yeah, uh, probably have to push it to, you can do you want to knock it off the counter? Um if it if I can basically push it and it's still kind of shaking and all of that, then yeah, I'm going to shove it as far as, as far as way as I can. Just okay. keep pushing it until it Lawrence, you come uh -huh. running back in and you will take in that Sandra's in the kitchen and that these two have have pulled down your parents' curtains. Yanked the VCR off and have wrapped it up. Uh huh. What do you do? Yeah. Okay. So they wrapped the VCR. So Sandra's in the kitchen, uh, poking, poking up my microwave with a broom. Yeah. Uh, what, why? Um, what do I see the microwave moving myself? Yes, you can see her pushing, and there's that moment where where she kind of kind of pulls back to do it again. And the microwave kind of keeps moving. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I will. I will duck into the kitchen and try and uh, uh, just unplug everything uh, from the wall. So the microwave would have like power cables behind it. I'll try and uh, reach for that and just yank it out. And sure, do me a yeah. favor. Why sure. don't you? Why don't you roll? Uh, I think Tinker will do for this. Tinker. All right. So I've got four total. Can I provide a helping die? Because I don't want him to get yeah. close enough to get wrapped up by the tentacles. That sounds good. Two sixes. Two sixes. So even as like the door kind of does that took pop off on the microwave and something kind of starts to come out, uh, you unplug it and kind of push this thing you know, over towards the, the sink. And it, it does a thing where it kind of grows out a little bit and then kind of comes to a stop, you know, where it's just doing the kind of the, the breathing thing of, of the machine cancer. Let me come back to Kara and uh, Tina. You've got this thing wrapped up in these curtains. What do you want to do now? Get it out the nearest door. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you could go out the, 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 the front door and throw it on the lawn. You could try and go out the back door and maybe, maybe to garage or to garbage cans. Let, let, do we know which is closer? The front door is closer. What Let's do you think? Kara? Get it out of the house and then like, like this stuff, maybe it's contagious or something. Let's get it on like the grass. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and then what do we do? What do we have to do after? Do we, do we wash our hands after a word, or, or like how do we make sure that it, we don't get infected? Uh, let Let's move it first. Okay. And yet yeah, you you two will will throw this thing, wrap it up, and throw it out onto the the front lawn. Um, it maybe there's a little bit more of a of a the the so pulsing, and then that will subside as the thing just kind of. You, You've heard about this that that the cancer kind of grows, spreads, and then stops, and it does, and it's just this weirdly oblong shape on the uh, the parents' front yard, on the the grass out there. Um, let's come back to Lawrence and Kara. Um, you've unplugged the microwave, kind of pushed over to the sink. It seems to have finished its present growth cycle. What do you want to do? Um, it was Sandra and Lawrence. Was oh, it? sorry, sorry, Sandra and Lawrence. I apologize. Yes, just, just so I'm clear what's yeah. going on. Um, okay. So I'll I'll see that they've they've done this. Uh, they've wrapped it around as something to try and get out of the house. Is there visibly any like growth on the outside of the microwave? Uh, yeah, a, a little bit has come out from uh, uh, from the underside of the door and yep. has kind of come up onto the top of this thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so I will I will look around for like um, like oven mitts or something to okay. to like 
put on and then do the same thing and take it out and put it uh, next to next to the other yeah. the, the VCR. Yeah. So you you will take put oven mitts on, haul this microwave out, yeah. uh, drop that you know onto the front lawn, uh, uh, you know next to this thing. Sa is Sandra, what's what 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 are you doing? Um. So I think I go to the back door. I open that sliding door and I step out and I start looking around. Is there? I, I'm grab, looking for some lighter fluid. Um, I uh, it is the Midwest, so I assume that there's a grill and yeah. charcoal and uh, uh, probably a, a thing of Kingsford lighter fluid there. So I'm just going to grab the lighter fluid and head where they did. Okay. And I think as they set the stuff down, I'm just going to start dousing it with the lighter fluid. So so you three are out there. You've put the microwave down. You're on this on Lawrence's front lawn. You've got the curtains with this thing. Um, kind of like, okay, what do we do now? And you will definitely see Sandra come out with a purpose with this big bottle of lighter fluid. Uh, I, I will turn around. Uh, I will also to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. We are not burning my parents' microwave and VCR. That's right. We we're not. burning that creepy shit that's in them. And I just kind of, you know. <laughs> so, so those two are kind of at each at each other, kind of uh, uh, Lawrence Big, kind of blocking out Sander from 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 getting that. Um, Kara, Kara's like sees the lighter fluid. Kind of nods, starts fishing around in her bag for a lighter. I, yep. I presume she's got one. Uh, and it'll be like, okay, I think we could just consider the TV and microwave and stuff. Those are a lost cause. We don't just burn it. And, and Lawrence is like, on your oh God. <laughs> we, we at least had to talk to his parents first before we do it. I mean, it's. You you gotta call them, Lawrence. You gotta tell them what's going on. I'm not gonna call my parents about this. You insane? Uh, you, well, you've got all these. You've got two appliances with machine cancer on your front lawn, and you, like these two want to basically turn into arsonists. So you'd better call your parents and tell them what's going on and see what they want us to do. Uh, they they were. Um, that okay, so that first of all, that means turning on the uh power supply back on, which will mean it will turn the CD player back on. So, like, um, Lawrence's first thing will be like, okay, but we gotta we gotta prep first. It seems pretty clear to me that this pointing at the two machines uh was caused by the the noise that we just heard played. Um, oh. So I you just didn't. yeah ho, ho, I mean so that's fine but like so Lawrence, Lawrence is starting to freak out a little bit. Um, well, I'll, it's, I'll your, it's your house, Lawrence. What do you what do you think we should do? I don't. I just I feel bad because we just like wrecked your stuff, and I want to make sure we don't wreck anything else. Fuck his stuff, <laughs> and then I start looking down the street. It's like if that thing started the machine cancer if that noise started the machine cancer then the van might be coming after us next and i start looking up and down the street with this wide-eyed look uh, and, and you think a fire on his front lawn is not going to say hey here's where you should be looking oh okay so maybe we take this stuff out of here and like i i, I don't know we could pretend it's a robbery or something if we take this and burn it somewhere else all right. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna disconnect this, the audio gear from the power. I'm gonna unplug that, so that won't turn back on. I'll turn on the master breaker back on, and uh, then I will I will call my parents and explain what what happened. Um, yeah. Okay, that's the plan. So Lawrence, you head back in to, to deal with the, the CD and then, then get the power back on. Um, uh, Christine, 
What do you do? Kara, why do I always make a mess of everything? I mean, it, it, it was the logical, logical thing to do. Um, uh, no one here is a mess of anything. It's uh, uh, Rust who's made a mess of things. But I mean, Lawrence is a sweetheart, and now it's like his parents are going to have to get new curtains, and the VCR is done, and the microwave's done, and it's all because I said we should come back here to his place and put and play the CD. I I was the first one to suggest playing the CD. This this isn't on you, okay? It's just something that happened, and you know, um, it's not your fault. And Lawrence isn't going to blame you. We all agreed on this together. I just I feel bad for him because I think he's going to get yelled at, and I don't want him to get yelled at. Well, we could always like I don't know, kick in a door and pretend it's a break-in or something. Or we could just not ever tell anyone about the CD. <laughs> Fuck that thing. Yeah, does machine cancer just happen sometimes? Maybe, maybe, you know, it's just a random thing that happened. And we were just, it's a good thing Lawrence was at home to deal with it before it spread to the rest of the house. And his parents won't ever want to tell anybody that their CD and audio equipment got the cancer. Yeah, no, absolutely. <sighs> and... Sandra, because you said you were looking for it. You will see, not on this street, doesn't come down this street, but you look over and you see a cross street, maybe down a, a half a block, you see this black van come rolling slowly along, like it's moving along in a search pattern. And I'm like, shit, shit, shit. That's where we're stopping for tonight. And they will take up with that next time. And uh, let's uh, let's get XP on the table. Let me look at the XP questions for this game. Quickly find that. So typically what I do with a game when we've got a four shot is I will stop for the, the wishes and uh, stars uh, at the end of the second session once we've had a chance to, to play through. Um, let me get XP real quick. And then I will see if there's... Questions 97. Uh, so uh, you're going to get experience points. It's uh, a 5 XP to raise a skill by one. Um, and you can buy a new skill uh, for five points, um, up to a max of five in any particular skill. Uh, can't raise stats. Um, so uh, the questions are, did you participate in the session? If you did, you get an XP. So everybody gets an XP for that. Um, uh, did your problem or relationships get you into trouble? And I think we saw uh, uh, tensions uh, across the board for everybody. So I think everybody gets a point for that. Um, uh, no one was broken. Uh, so nobody gets a point for that. Um, did you put yourself in harm's way to resolve a mystery? I think we can say globally um, that uh, between uh, chasing down Pumpkin and putting the CD on and uh, facing the machine cancer that everybody can get a point for that. Um, and then did you learn something new? Would you say yes? Yes, we've, we've learned that there's yeah. a CD that can cause machine cancer, so yeah. definitely. All right, so that's another point. So everybody should be getting four points for today. And I'll tell you what, just because I'm a generous GM, I'm going to give you the extra five. So so round it up to five so you can, uh, for next session, uh, raise this skill. Uh, any questions uh, anybody has before we, before we wrap? Um, I do want to say we'll start at the beginning of next session. If anybody w wants to take a look back at their character and re-divvy out your stats or your skills, I'll give you the opportunity to do that in case you're like, okay, this would be better this way.
Okay. Well, then, then I'm going to stop here and uh, stop the broadcast, and we'll be set.